Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this service on the 16th Sunday after Trinity. Now, you'll notice I'm wearing my face mask. I'm going to take it off in a second, but just a reminder that it should be covering your nose and your mouth. And if, like me, you have glasses, which is sometimes a bit of a struggle, isn't it, with steamy eyes, if you make sure your glasses are on top of your face mask, it stops your glasses steaming up. Top tip from your vicar. <laughs> so I'll take it off now, but just a reminder that it should be covering your nose and your mouth. And it matches, doesn't it, my, with my green? Um, and please, yeah, do remember to continue to um, with social distancing, please. And any conversations you'd like to ha- happen at the end of the service, please can you make sure they happen um, outside on the churchyard um, as you leave church this morning. Uh, next Sunday service is Harvest. And that will be an outdoor service on the church green. So do wrap up warm and do bring a chair as well if you'd like to sit down. So that's 9.30 on the church green for Harvest Festival next Sunday. And then that will be followed by the APCM, uh, presumably in church, I think. Uh, So Harvest and APCM. And do please remember we have a retiring collection this morning as you leave. So let's take a moment to be still and to listen to our first hymn as we come into God's presence this morning. Today we ponder on our season of creation tide and think about the gift of water that God has given us. Turning to our order of service, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Jesus is the name at which every knee shall bend on heaven and on earth and under the earth. Let us bow before him in prayer and penitence. We have exalted ourselves, full of selfish ambition and conceit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have blamed others for our faults and not taken responsibility for our actions. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have turned from God and followed our own paths. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the 16th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Paul's now going to bring us our reading from the Old Testament. A reading from the book of Exodus, Water from the Rock. From the wilderness of Sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarrelled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarrelled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, 
The chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did, did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. So as I mentioned at the beginning of our service this morning, we're currently in the season of creation, which runs from the 1st of September. I really need to check this every time I tell you this through to somewhere in early October, which is the Saint Day of St. Francis of Assisi. We'll promise to check that when I get home. But today I specifically wanted to think about um, the gift of water, particularly after we just heard that um, story from Exodus about Moses and the Israelites and their need for water. Now, I might have joked with you before, but Paul and I drink a huge amount of water. I can easily get through sort of four or five pints of water in a day. And of course, that's very good for you, but it means we often spend our holidays searching for the next blue. <laughs> Not particularly useful, but I still stand by drinking a, a lot of water. It's, it's very good for you. And of course, water is also a really important symbol in our Christian worship. Now, I want you for a moment to drag your minds back to February. In this weird time of this year in lockdown, uh, February almost seems like an entire lifetime to go, a go, lifetime ago. And at the same time, it almost feels like it was yesterday, doesn't it? I don't know if anyone else has that experience, but I feel a bit like that. I don't know how we've suddenly popped in at the end of September. But in February, of course, we had the um, visit from the Dean of Hereford Cathedral as he brought us the relic of St. Thomas Cantaloupe. And we had that lovely service, didn't we, where we started in the Priory, we came into church, and then we finished our service down at St. Milberg as well, as it was the week, um, her, her feast day as well. And we went to, yeah, her well. Um, and at the end of the service, I think it was both the Dean and Matthew sprayed us with holy water, didn't they? Do you remember that? Um, as we stood by the well that had been beautifully decorated with flowers. And that holy water, of course, that we were doused in reminds us of our baptism. It reminds us of God's grace and his blessings that um, abundantly are showered on us. And it's a really important symbol, and I, um, I miss that aspect of our worship as we remember um, things through the sprinkling of holy water, and hopefully one day soon that will continue. And I also, uh, more recently, had the joy of baptising a little girl at um, All Saints Barrington uh, last month. It was due to happen in June, but we postponed it, but I was still able to baptise her last month. 
And of course then, the symbol of um, water at the baptismal font, it's very obvious, it's great we're trying to explain things to children because it's so visible and tangible. And it was when, you know, in our baptism, we remember that um, we become forgiven children of God and become disciples of Christ as we are made clean, as we are washed with baptismal waters. And there's other symbols at baptisms, of course, oil and light. But I think the water is the most obvious and the one that um, sticks in our minds the most. So in baptism, we are welcomed into the family of God as we pass through the water. But what is that family of God like? Simply put, I think, it's like Jesus. Our epistle this morning, which we um, haven't heard, but I recommend you go read it when you get home, is from Philippians chapter 2, Paul's letters to the Philippians. And Paul instructs the church, he says, Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Now that seems like quite a tall order. It can be difficult to see how um, we go about putting that in place. But Paul reminds us how we are to achieve such things. He says, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. We do all things through fixing our eyes on Jesus the Messiah. And then in this passage from Philippians, we hear that wonderful poem of the nature of this Jesus who we worship, who humbled himself, born in human form, and suffering death on a cross for our sakes. Paul continues, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. It's really fantastic and encouraging stuff, but also challenging when we know how readily we fall into sin and how often, sadly, the church gets things wrong. But this is where Jesus' teaching is also important, I think, in helping us to navigate our faith. Now, this um, reading from Matthew's Gospel is another tricky part of Matthew's uh, Gospel. The parable of the two sons that we heard, which was the second part of the reading, is another parable that is unique only to Matthew's Gospel. And it's the first of a series of three parables that all come one after another, that in my um, commentary calls them three upsetting parables, (laughs) which is quite the name. But these parables, basically what they're doing is they're accusing the religious leaders of the day of hypocrisy and disobedience, of rejecting God's prophets and not responding to God's call. Jesus is unveiling the hypocrisy of these leaders who may have said yes to labouring in God's vineyard, but it is sadly only lip service. They don't follow through with their word. And in fact, it is those considered unrighteous who will be ahead of these chief priests and elders when God's kingdom comes. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. We must be wary of talking the talk, but not walking the walk. I include myself in that. Now, returning to our Exodus reading and the gift of water... The people of Israel needed water to drink. And this was another lesson, really, I think, in, um, for them to learn their dependence of God. Remember, they've just come out of Egypt, where perhaps um, thing, farming, and even though they were slaves, um, things were a lot easier. You know, they had the Nile and irrigation, and getting water and food may have seemed a lot simpler. Well, now they were in the wilderness and they were having to solely depend on their God. We've just heard the reading just before the one we heard this morning, we had the story of the manna coming down from heaven, and now we have the story of water. And it's the same staff that Moses uses to bring forth the um, water from the rock as um, he used to part the Nile, which I think is quite an interesting thing to remember. So um, God brings forth water for the Israelites from the rock, And they are still having to learn to depend on the God of Israel, who, remember, is the God who created the whole world. And I think this story of the people of Israel travelling through the desert 
um, through, the desert, through the wilderness, it also reminds us of the absolute dependency of human beings on water and, of course, on God, but here on water, that gift we need to survive. Many of the current conflict zones in our world have as one of their roots the lack of water. For instance, the war in Syria was preceded by seven years of drought, which pushed farmers off the land into the cities, creating tensions in those communities. This year in the UK, of course, although we were very grateful, I think, for the sunshine during the height of lockdown, it was also a great cause for concern, I think, for such a long period where it, it didn't rain. And of course, that's affected our um, farmers and their crops and their yields. And thankfully, this dry spell is able, al allowing them to put crops back in the ground, which is good. I was talking to a farmer's wife only yesterday and saying things are feeling a bit better this autumn. But our strange uh, weather patterns are making it increasingly difficult for our farmers and something you know, we should be thinking about as we approach harvest time. But I think such events like these make us treasure the gift of water given to us by our Creator God. And they of course make us consider our own actions and the actions of others, our leaders in government and business. There is a saying that until you have carried water, you do not understand its value. In many parts of the world, and people live in water poverty, which is defined as less than 20 litres of water per day. Now, St Paul, as I mentioned in that reading from Philippians, has told us not to look to our own interests, but consider the interests of others. Perhaps in solidarity with those who do not have um, access to water so readily available as we are fortunate to do so, we can maybe think of ways we could reduce our water cons consumption and protect this really precious resource. And there are many, many hidden ways we can reduce our water consumption. You might be saying it's not just by Alison and Paul drinking less water <laughs> during the day. There are lots of hidden ways uh, that are, we, um, we can look at our water footprint through the food we eat, uh, the clothes we buy. And maybe that might be something to do um, at home this afternoon to research our own water footprint and think about uh, the ways we can bring it down. I'm determined this year to get a water butt for the garden, which is something we still haven't done. And I'm also trying to buy less clothes. And when I do purchase something, consider carefully what it's made of and where it comes from. And I think this is where our reflections on hypocrisy are important. We're all striving to do our best, but sometimes um, larger companies perhaps can be claiming to produce, I saw something in the news this week about a company claiming to produce uh, eco clothing, while at the same time perpetuating fast fashion and not paying their workers a living wage. It can be very difficult to navigate these things in our current world and it takes um, yeah, a bit of research and insight. And sometimes these values of hypocrisy are in conflict, of course, with the values of Christ's kingdom, which, as we have seen, is one of humility and compassion. And another very quickly, just obvious way to safeguard our water is considering our use of single-use plastics. There is lots of research going on to microplastics at the moment, and the data can be a little bit overwhelming, but um, the scale of the pollution of plastic in our watercourses and our oceans. Now, there's an organisation called Everyday Plastic, which is trying to help us look at our plastic use quite simply. They basically want as many people as possible to collect their plastic uh, for a week, just a week, record what they use, enter their results online, and send in their data. And those of us in the environmental group would be very happy to help anyone who might struggle with a bit of entering their data online. But there's a really good short uh, video online on their website um, and hopefully by doing that survey and looking at our plastic, we can be more aware of maybe the unnecessary plastic that we use in our lives. I'm often quite aware of the plastic I put in the recycling. There's a lot of plastic that can't be recycled that goes straight in my bin, which I sometimes forget about. So I'm quite looking forward to doing this survey and thinking about the ways maybe I can reduce my plastic use to then help preserve this really um, incredible gift of water on which we all depend to live. So I hope this morning, while reflecting on what it means to be part of God's family, 
I've allowed us to consider the precious God-given gift of water, essential to life on this planet and in need of our protection. And I think in all of this, we must remember that Jesus Christ is Lord of all creation. And we are to recall St. Paul's words, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Amen. We stand to affirm our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now sit or kneel for our time of intercession, which Eloise is going to lead us in. Lord, in Let us come to the God who is always more ready to hear than we are to pray, bringing our own desires and the needs of the whole world. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exist. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. We give thanks for the faith we share and for Christians across the world, united in exalting the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Creator of the universe, teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. Thank you for the gift of water, Remind us of its worth and help us to consider our own water usage. Thank you for clean water supplies in this country. Let us not forget those who struggle to find clean water for drinking and sanitation. Remind us of the waters of our baptism through which we became part of the body of Christ, your church, with Christians across the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of the poor, Help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Teach the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor in the earth. We pray for all in positions of power and authority whose decisions affect the lives of many. May they be guided by compassion and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, in the wake of the COVID-19 global pandemic, hear our cries of compassion and heal our world and all creatures. Inspire our hearts with a holy imagination to rise, freed from the demands to produce and consume to imagine a just, sustainable way of living where all have enough and all may be restored. Hear our prayers for the sick, the anxious and the grieving that they might find strength and healing that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. During this season of creation, grant us to observe the Sabbath for our planet. Strengthen us with the faith to trust in your providence. 
Inspire us with creativity to share what we have been given. Teach us to be satisfied with enough. Send your Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, who puts down the mighty from their seat and exalts the humble and meek, hear our prayers which we offer for all your people, that the world may be filled with your righteousness and resound to your praise. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand for the peace? If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love and any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with me. stand for God's blessing. May God, who has highly exalted Jesus Christ, lift your hearts and raise your spirits that you may live and love for the good of the kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.